This is a brief introduction to mixed networks, a kind of communications network that allows us to communicate more freely. This is important for society to progress socially, and it, if we live in fear of constant mass surveillance, sociologists have said that it will thwart social progress and essentially make us boring. Michael Hayden is famously quoted as saying, we kill people based on metadata. Now this is the ex-NSA director speaking and the ex-CIA director. Military groups around the world often kill people with drones. Let's quote Philip Rogway in his paper, The Moral Character of Cryptographic Works. It goes like this. At this point, I think we would do well to put ourselves in the mindset of a real adversary, not a notional one. The well-funded intelligence agency, the profit-obsessed multinational, the drug cartel. You have an enormous budget. You control lots of infrastructure. You have teams of attorneys more than willing to interpret the law creatively. You have a huge portfolio of zero days. You have a mountain of self-righteous conviction. Your aim is to collect it all, exploit it all, know it all. What would frustrate you? What problems do you not want a bunch of super smart academics to solve? So when we say we are reducing or preventing metadata leakage, this, this is really what we mean right here. This, these, this is a, uh, not an exhaustive list, but this gives you an idea of the types of metadata we're talking about. And I'm talking about lo geographical location, message sender, message receiver, send time, receive time, size of messages, things like that. So what, what this means is that encryption is not sufficient for maintaining privacy on, on the internet. Encryption protects against our metadata being captured by passive network adversaries, but it cannot prevent metadata leakage by itself. So what are our options? We have several options. None of these things are well field tested. And I'd like to point out, especially although this talk is about mixed networks, mixed networks are not very well field tested. Um, I'm focusing on decryption mixed nets but there are also verified mixed networks. The two categories are not completely mutually exclusive, uh, but they generally have di slightly different use cases. Um, verified mixed networks are also sometimes referred to as verified mix shuffles. And so there's trade-offs with each of these kinds of communication systems. And I believe that mixed networks are our best option right now because they scale uh, the best uh, in, uh, when we talk about scaling, in this case, we mean with respect to the number of users and the number of messages on the network. Uh, some of these other systems actually leak less metadata than mixed nets. However, these other systems also don't scale well. They have uh, computational performance limitations. Now, this might change in the future, uh, but right now, I, it's my opinion that decryption mixed nets are our best option. And notice that I don't have Tor listed here. And that's because what we're talking about is communication systems that protect us from sufficiently global adversaries. Now, Tor is trivially uh, broken by a global adversary. And it also has many other types of attacks. So what we're really uh, trying to do is advocate for other types of communication systems that are not necessarily in uh, in competition with Tor, just that they can complement each other in that they each solve different types of problems and they have their own pros and cons. So all this anonymous network communication has uh, originated with David Chom, famous mathematician who published his seminal paper, Untraceable Electronic Mail, Return Addresses, and Digital Pseudonyms, published in 1981. And all the big ideas are in this paper. However, the two that we focus on in decryption mix networks are sender anonymity and anonymous replies. So here's a sort of uh, a very simple architecture diagram for mix networks. Clients retrieve a view of the network from a PKI. In this case, the public key infrastructure does not refer to a TLS certificate authority or anything like that. Instead, it's a decentralized system that gives clients a view of the network and gives clients connectivity information such as IP address, TCP port number, and cryptographic key material. So the clients use this connectivity information 
to send messages and receive messages from the mixed network. Now, there are other applications but uh, besides client-to-client -client, uh, messaging. However, this is the most easily, re readily understood example and most cited in the academic literature. So what is a mixed network? Each, uh, a mixed network is comprised of mixes. A mix is essentially a router. However, the routing style, uh, the, it's, it's essentially a cryptographic router. Uh, and what, what we mean by cryptographic, we mean that the messages are undergoing a cryptographic transformation uh, when, uh, when they pass through the router. And so the threat we're trying to protect against here, I want to I want to give you a kind of a, a, a intuition about how they work. It's it's quite simple. So what we want to do is protect against a global adversary who who has total visibility into the network. They don't have access to this machine uh, that's operating the mix, but they do. Uh, they are able to watch its internet connection. So we are protecting. We are what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it very hard for the adversary to link input messages with output messages. So let's, uh, so an example, there are many dozens of mix, uh, mixed designs uh, in 37 years of academic research. Uh, of course, there's many designs and there's many mixed strategies. And I'll talk about the threshold mix strategy. Sometimes it's also referred to as the Chumian mix. So uh, let's let's say that the threshold for this mix is four, which means that this mix accumulates four messages. And once it has that threshold number of messages, it shuffles them, and then and then sends them out. So now this means that if I were in a passive adversary, I could try to guess which input message corresponds to which output message. And in this case, since the threshold is four, I would have a 0.25 probability or a 25% chance of guessing right. This is not a very good s safety margin. So I would feel more comfortable in, in a real world uh, scenario to actually have a threshold of more like 10,000 or, or a million. However, in that case, if our anonymity set size for a threshold mix is a million, I, the message wouldn't traverse the network through this mix until it accumulated a million messages. And that adds a lot of latency to communication. And it's also uncertain how much latency it would add since we'd be unsure about when it would accumulate enough messages to meet the threshold. And that's, those are the downsides to this mix strategy. There are many mixed strategies and in this paper by Claudia Diaz and Andrei Sarantov, they look at a, a they make a functional comparison of different mixed strategies. They've actually got some cool graphs in the paper which show the trade-offs between anonymity set size or entropy and latency. Uh, so now not all mixed strategies have a precise anonymity set size. Kestogen has published this paper. Uh, about the stop and go mix strategy. Now this is falls under the category of continuous time mix strategies. And in this case, each message is independently delayed. So there isn't this same type of statistical interference that we have for, for, uh, for threshold mixes. And what I mean by statistical interference is that, that previously received messages affect uh, messages that are uh, sent out of the mix. Now, for continuous time mixes, since they're delayed independently, the um, type of measurement we're interested in instead of anonymity set size is, well, we would just, sometimes uh, Shannon entropy is used. And other types of measurements can, can also be made. So that's it. And uh, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions.